Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So once again I'm back with the 1959 Surrey Tournament and once again in the main role we have none other than Bobby Fischer. So this time as it was I showed already a couple of games, also last time I showed uh, two games by Mr. Nivergeld playing against Fischer and playing against Tal and both of the players won and it did. it is indeed a very nice race. Fischer and Tal are um, yeah just right against each other uh, going for that first place in this Surrey tournament uh, but of course there are also some other players like here we have Svetozar Gligoric, there is also Karas, uh, a lot of strong players and um, this is one of the games so I think this is round 11 which will definitely determine the course of this tournament. Um, here Gligoric plays with the white pieces, I already showed a couple of games from him, he is a very strong a Yugoslavian Grandmaster and Fischer will try to do something with the black pieces. So we have e4, c5 and uh, of course uh, Fischer does play in the Nidorf. After d4, pawn captures on d4, knight captures on d4. We have knight to f6, knight to c3 and a6. And now after all this we have bishop to g5. So Nidorf allows to go into this three trouser variation where bishop comes to g5 and after this we have e6. A pretty standard move, um, yeah, just opening up the lines, bishop will come on e7 and uh, this knight will be unpinned. We have f4 now and yeah, uh, Gligorich goes for this sharper line, uh, one other line where, which is very famous is queen to d2, go queenside castle and then continue uh, with the push of the pawns. But okay, we have f4 here, bishop to e7 and queen to f3. Now, uh, this queen to f3 doesn't allow the push of b5 and this is why it's a very important move because after b5 we would have e5 and then all sorts of problems will come uh, at black, on the black side of the board. So uh, here, in, of course, instead of that we have knight from b to d7 and then queenside castle. Now this knight is defended by the rook. Uh, queen to c7 and now b5 will be possible but first we have g4. Uh, Gligory decided to push the pawns on the king side. b5 and we have bishop captures on f6. Pawn captures on f6 and um, you could have also captured with something else like with the bishop or with the knight but uh, this pawn capture is a pretty common one for the Richter Rouser because now uh, as you can see all of these pawns are very well situated in front of the king and will definitely provide a very nice defense here. My, one might think, okay, f5 could be a good move, but this allows knight to e5, and then with the continued development of the black pieces, for the moment, it could say that white has gained a lot of space, but uh, Fischer didn't want to go into this. So here, uh, sorry, Gligorich didn't want to go into this, so he played bishop to g2. After that, bishop to b7, and now rook from h to e1. Since there won't be any attack on the king's side, now this rook can actually come on the e-file, and maybe prepare some of the pawn pushes. Queenside castle and now a3 stopping b4. Um, yeah, queenside castle also a pretty common uh, idea for the Richter Rouser on the black side. Knight to b6, knight to c4, a very big threat by Fischer, and now we have rook to d3. And uh, king to b8, and now the other rook comes on d1. So the doubling up of the rooks, king to b8, also a very nice move. And in some variations you can put the rook on c8, but it's always nice to move the rook from uh, move the king from the open file. d5. And it is actually Fischer who is the first one to start with a pawn push. Uh, always nice to push d5 in a Sicilian. It means that practically you have gone out of the opening with very good chances. So we have pawn captures on d5, knight captures on d5, knight captures and bishop captures, and after that the queen of course has to move, so queen to f1. Still keeping an eye on this pawn, and uh, actually you might think, okay, if bishop captures on d2, queen captures on d2, can queen capture on f4? Well, yes, of course she can, but uh, it's not all that good, because after king to b1, there is this threat of knight to c6, and it's really difficult for a black to actually uh, challenge this. Uh, queen rook to d4 actually is the best move, is considered to be the best move and if you move the rook to c8 still knight to c6 is coming with a check and you will pick up the bishop. So if for example you move the bishop, I don't know, to d6 then knight to c6 still you will lose the rook. For example king to c7, knight to d8, rook to d8 and then rook to c3 even. After king comes to d7 you can even play this. So just uh, destroying black's defenses. 
So after king queen to f1, Fisher of course sees this and he doesn't go for bishop to g2. Instead he plays bishop to c5 and now we have bishop to d5, rook to d5 and knight back to e2. Ligorich decides that he wants to uh, yeah, sacrifice even further. So here after knight to e2, rook captures on uh, d3. Rook captures on d3 but one other thing also this knight is now protecting this pawn here on f4. h5 and uh, here uh, Fisher tries to uh, shift his attention also and gain some ground on the king side. It would be very nice to include uh, that one last piece that still isn't in the game, the rook on h8. So here h5, if g5 is pushed then simply you're improving black's pawn structure and um, yeah this could be considered good for Fisher. also you see the queen is eyeing now this pawn here. So of course you don't want to capture and here Gligorich captured on h5. Rook captures on h5 and now queen to g2. Uh, after that we have rook back to h8 because queen to g7 and uh, queen to g8 could be considered a threat and now even a rook to c3. And this is a moment where it all happens. So here uh, rook to c3 of course a pretty standard idea of uh, attacking the bishop and the queen is behind it. So the bishop is pinned. And what you would usually see for example here we could play queen to, queen to b6. Uh, queen to a7, queen to d6, it doesn't really matter, the point is you have to move the queen so that this bishop becomes unpinned. But for some reason here Fischer decided to play rook to c8 and uh, just by making that one move the whole idea falls apart. Because here now b4 is coming and uh, it is really, yeah, it is not all that clear how this bishop can be saved. Of course probably Fischer thought, okay I can play bishop to e3. Uh, king has to go to b1 and then queen to b6 is defending here the bishop. But probably he didn't count on rook captures on c8, king captures on c8 and now even queen to f3. Uh, here actually queen to f3 isn't considered to be the best move, actually h4 is uh, the best move because now it is really really difficult to stop this h pawn being pushed. It is a passed pawn. It is far away from the king and the queen can really easily support him. But the same idea happened after king to d8, h4 was pushed. And now you see the problem. So positionally a dangerous and uh, I would say a very bad mistake by Fischer because he allowed all of these exchanges. He exchanged the rooks and he allowed this uh, pawn to become, become a passed pawn and at that being a very easily pushed past pawn. And on the other hand, what is uh, else the problem? What else is the problem? This bishop on e3 is kind of cramped, so there aren't a lot of squares to where he can go, and if he goes on some squares he will still be attacked, which means that the queen needs to take uh, care of him. Needs to take care of him. Um, so there aren't any actually that good ideas how to approach this position. Um, I've been so searching for some, for example, more natural moves could be considered as something like e5, you want to open up the position, but h5, bishop to f4, knight to e4, pawn captures on f4, and uh, queen to h1 can be played. And uh, that is the whole point. So you don't want to allow this queen to come closer to this pawn and with queen to h1 this is a very important move because it puts the queen behind the pawn but not just that if you don't do it if you play queen if you push h6 immediately then you have queen to g1 king to b2 and then queen to h2. So now the queen is behind and the black can uh, support um, black can actually easily attack this pawn and he won't have any problems. So so here after all this queen to h1 needs to be played and after for example king to e7 you can continue with the pawn push. And now once again you have a couple of ideas. So if you want to go queen to b8 then simply first check uh, a necessary tempo uh, and after this you play uh, queen to g1 and then with an idea of actually coming to g7. So this is just one of ideas how you can uh, yeah, just go towards this position. Um, if you don't want to play king to e7, if you want to play for example king to d7, then also h6 is coming. So, I mean whatever you do the pawn is pushed and it's really difficult to go about it. If you want to play f5 to maybe come with the queen on f6, then still h6 is coming, queen to f6, h7 and if you play queen to h8 then queen comes on a8 and uh, when the king moves you will lose the queen. So. Uh, um, pretty much whatever you play in this position here after queen to h1 you are not being able to stop this pawn from being promoted. 
So here after h4, uh, Fischer didn't push e5, he had another idea. First he played king to e7, after this was a h5 and now f5. So that was the second option instead of e5, uh, you push f5 and then with bishop to d4, then you're on this diagonal and stopping the pawn from being promoted. But okay, we have a6, bishop to d4, knight captures on d4, queen captures on d4, and now once again, queen to h1. This time, queen to h1 is actually not the best move. Here, you should have played uh, queen to g2. And why is that? Well, of course, once again, the threat is queen to g7, and then you're blocking off the queen uh, from yeah, just uh, uh, keeping an eye on the h8 square, and still you are not allowing the queen to give uh, any more checks. So after the queen gives a check on d1, for example, king to b2, and you're on this diagonal and you don't have any problems. If you play something like king to f8, then simply uh, queen to queen to a8 check, king back to e7 and h7, and nothing can stop h8 from being promoted. Um, if you want to play instead of king to f8, queen to h8 immediately, then as I've said, queen to g7, queen captures, pawn captures, and there is no way how this king can approach this pawn. But okay, queen to h1 was played, and here queen to h8 going behind the pawn. h7, king to f8, and the reason why uh, Lilgorich played, played queen to h1, because quite simply he found the winning continuation, a forced continuation, so he didn't have to calculate anything else. Queen to a8 check, king g7, you capture the queen, king captures, and now c4, and uh, yeah, what is the idea here? Uh, if pawn captures, then simply a4, and uh, the idea is that uh, white has created a passed pawn, which is much faster than any other black of, of black spawns. So the probably the best move here could be e5, for going for creating your own passed pawn, but white simply pushes b5. You can capture it, it's the same thing, pawn captures, pawn captures, and after a couple of moves you see that white is getting out with a check, and after king captures, queen to g2, you will pick up the pawns and it will be enough for a win. So here after c4, Fischer didn't actually respond to this, he played king to h7, and after c5, uh, it was in this position, position that Fischer resigned the game. Yeah, that uh, positional mistake was crucial. Um, after that, pretty much everything was forced, and Fischer didn't manage to get out of it. So Gligorich got a win, which pulled Fischer a little bit behind in the race for the first place, but actually I've prepared some more games until the end of the tournament. Also a game with Keras and a game with Tal, uh, where I will also explain the current situations and in the end show the standings and see how actually young Fischer managed to play such an amazing tournament with all of these great players in 1959 in Zurich. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I would like to thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.